everyone and welcome to Bioradiation's podcast studio here at Biorad's headquarters in California. I'm your host, Laura Moriarty, and in the studio this time we have Dr. Eli Hefner, who is a senior principal scientist in our advanced development R&D team. Welcome, Eli. Hi, Laura. So, Eli, we've been hearing a lot of buzz in the press and scientific journals about cancer vaccines. Can you tell us why this is? Sure. Uh, to start with, the concept of cancer vaccines has been intensely studied in the last 30 years. The general idea is to inject material that will stimulate the adaptive immune system and generate a lasting response to the cancer cells. For a while in the 90s, it was looking pretty bleak. The clinical trials all seemed to produce very low response rates in cancer patients. Research in the area looked like it was going to decline, uh, but then checkpoint blockades and CAR T cell therapies were discovered. Once these started showing promise, interest in cancer vaccines was renewed. Now there are dozens of studies and clinical trials attempting to combine cancer vaccines and CAR T or checkpoint inhibitors. So this is great news. We obviously need as many options as we can find. So are cancer vaccines a, a new field of research? No, the idea has actually been around for over 100 years. The first published accounts took place back in the 1890s. Wow. However, it's not surprising that the results were mixed and couldn't be reproduced. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. So this approach received very little attention for most of the last century, and uh, it was even condemned. So why the renewed interest now? As I mentioned before, the most recent wave of excitement is around combination vaccine therapies or vaccines to treat residual disease. This last approach is particularly interesting to me because it represents a bridge between treatment and prevention of cancer through vaccination. So there are two main types of cancer vaccines? Yes, there are therapeutic and prophylactic vaccines. Therapeutic vaccines attempt to treat established disease while prophylactics aim at preventing the disease from emerging in the first place. Okay, so can you give us some examples of, of each of those methods and why they're different? Sure, right, let's start with prophylactic vaccines. Okay. These have a tremendous potential and in animal models they are extremely effective. However, there are significant challenges in developing these treatments and carrying out the clinical trials can be cumbersome. A couple of prophylactic vaccines have made it to market and seem to be effective. These are the vaccines against onco oncogenic viruses such as HPV and HBV specifically. Got it. Yeah, so vaccinations to prevent infection can greatly reduce the risk of developing specific cancers and that are linked to, to uh, viruses such as HPV and HPV. So what about the therapeutic options? Yeah, uh, good. Let's switch gears and uh, discuss therapeutic mo uh, methods. These methods have garnered most of the attention over the last 30 years, but the results have been disappointing. Oh. Yeah, to date, the only FDA-approved cancer therapeutic vaccine was Provenge. It did extend life of uh, patients with prostate cancer, but only by about four months on average, and there was no increase in the number of people that would achieve remission. On top of that, the treatment was extremely expensive. How much did it cost? Nearly $90,000 for a four-month regimen. Oh my goodness. So then maybe therapeutic vaccines are not the best approach? Well, maybe not. Uh, treating advanced disease with cancers is sort of like treating a fully engulfed house fire uh, with a fire extinguisher. There may be breakthroughs that teach us how to effectively create therapeutic vaccines, but for now, the area with the greatest promise seems to be combining vaccines with emerging immunology approaches for the treatment of residual disease or possibly in combination with early detection and surgical intervention. Got it. So what about the, the prophylactic vaccines? Yeah, I find this area extremely interesting. The data in mouse models is compelling. If you can accurately predict which neoantigen will arise, then a preemptive prophylactic treatment can be used. To make this a reality in humans is going to be a challenge though. So researchers will need to generate data that effectively couples data from the variety of sources, genomic, proteomic, metabolomic, every other omic you could think of, <laughs> to neoantigen prediction. Once this is achieved, then studies will need to be carried out to show that treatments are safe and effective. This is where it gets tricky, Oh, right? So imagine trying to prove that something you do today will have a positive effect 30 years later. Oh my goodness. Therein lies the challenge. Yeah. So despite the challenges, this approach has the potential to completely change the game. Yeah, it really does sound promising. Yes, it is. It's still a long way to go, but it is very promising. So what do you think the future holds for cancer vaccines? I'm particularly excited to see what comes out of the combination therapy studies. We may see some big gains in cancer treatment. It would be incredibly exciting if we discover a way to enhance the percent of patients who achieve long-term remission after surgery 
or treatment with amino oncology treatments. On the other end of the therapeutic spectrum, combining super early detection with surgery and vaccination could have tremendous benefit. This approach simplifies the study a bit by working with individuals who are already at risk of recurrence due to their initial disease. Mm -hmm. You could imagine a treatment scenario that looks something like this. Okay. Tumor is detected in the early stage. If it is not spread, then surgical in intervention can be used. The excised material could be analyzed to identify neoantigens, and then an individualized vaccine could be developed and administered to prevent recurrence of that type of cancer. The future looks really bright. There's lots of options out there, from cancer vaccines to immuno-oncology. Thank you so much for coming in to chat with us, Eli. No problem. Thanks for the invitation. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Come back soon for more exciting life science podcasts. Bye for now.